Just out with earnings this morning. We told you the numbers, better than expected on just about every metric. And joining us right now, first on CNBC, is Verizon's chairman and CEO, Hans Vesberg. Um, Hans, running through the numbers, uh, on an adjusted basis, 137 for the earnings per share. That was seven cents better than the street was expecting. $33.8 billion better than the $32.7 billion the street was looking for on revenue. You beat on the postpaid phone subscriber estimates, but beat on just about everything here. And I, I think what maybe is most important is you raised your guidance for the full year by more than just the seven cents that you beat by this quarter. So you're looking for the stronger than anticipated growth to continue through the year? Yeah. No, I think we, we're executing our strategy that we laid out several years ago. Uh, it's clearly bearing fruit right now in all the areas we're executing, all the way from the broadband to the 5G to the 4G. So I think the team is doing a great job. And, and as I said, I mean, you see it in the numbers right now. Even if you compare to 2019, we're up on every metric. I mean, 2020, second quarter was, of course, a little bit special. Uh, so, no, really good performance in the team. And, but, we, you know, we know what we're doing. We have an extremely uh, good base of customers. We have the best networks. We have a differentiated off uh, offering with our Disney Plus, Discovery Plus, very different from anyone else when it comes to strategy. We're into mobile edge compute with 5G, fixed wireless access. So we, we have a great strategy that we're executing on and, and the team is performing well. You know, consumers are pretty flush right now, and having your phone is probably more important than ever. Are, are you able to capitalize on that, or do you think that this is actually stealing market share from other companies right now? No, I think you see that we're actually gaining uh, more than our fair share, and I think that it's coming from that, first of all, the economy is coming back. We basically have equally much traffic in the stores right now as we have pre-pandemic. We almost have the same patterns of people moving around in a mobile network. So we see much more traffic in the dense urban areas again. Uh, and, and of course, then 5G is uh, on the brink right now. We have now 20% of our customers have a 5G phone. We have step ups and basically 60% of our new accounts in the quarter are taking the unlimited premium, which is sort of the highest level of 5G uh, and the step ups where where our customers is going to the next level of, of our unlimited is also very high. So, no, it's a lot of things happening, but again, it's a long-term strategy we're executing on, and it's, it's actually performing well. We've been checking in with you throughout the pandemic just about what the consumer looks like, especially uh, post-pandemic. Are they getting back out there? And you mentioned that there's more traffic in dense urban areas like this, but is it back to the normal levels that we've it's seen? It's almost free? back to normal uh, uh, in the dense urban areas right now. Oh, it, there are places that actually are the same as 2019 for the same time period. But there, there are some small differences. And remember, we measure that on handovers in the network, how people are moving around. And for sometimes here in New York, for example, we were down 60 percent, meaning people right. were staying home. They didn't move. Now we're almost back to how it looked before. So clearly our strategy to build a lot of capacity in dense urban areas with our millimeter wave is now starting to turn out to be an excellent decision. You, you gave some guidance on the CapEx for this year, too, 17 and a half to 18 and a half billion dollars that you're planning to spend this year. And I think it was two to three billion dollars from that 10 billion additional that you were going to spend out over seven yeah. years. Um, 5G, I have to say, you know, it's, it feels like it's here, but I think it's still less than 10% of your phone customers have 5G at this point. When it's, does it... it's actually more than that. It's 20% of our customers having a 5G phone. Okay. Yeah, so it's going and very fast. And that's going really fast, because I was yeah, looking at numbers it's, from not long It's ago. ahead of the number we gave at our investor day in the beginning of the year, where we believe in 2023 we're going to have over 50% of our customers. So we're already in 20. And you see that momentum. People want to have 5G, and of course they want to be on our network. How many of the new phones that, that people come in and get are 5G at this point? What percentage? I would say a, a, a big portion of it. And, and the Remember also, we bought Spectrum in the beginning of the year. Right. Basically, all the 5G phones we have sold since the beginning is also C-band capable. So, meaning that Spectrum that we bought for 53 billion US dollars is also going to be usable when we turn it on. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.